So here's a look at what happens when you leave your garden. <laughs> you let your garden go. Oh my God, Brian, look at the dill. <laughs> Come and stand beside this dill. It's taller than you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at how tall this dill is. Let's it's go, it's folks. taller than you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is not meant to be a garden tour, but this is five weeks of doing nothing in this garden. Brian, look at the hollyhocks. Yep. Oh my gosh. Look at this jungle. Not a lot of beans. Maybe they're eating some. No, oh, they're just maybe gonna go to flower. Look at all of these flowers. Oh, those are calendula. Look at the sunflowers and the compost. <laughs> and these sunflowers that I didn't thin. Oh my gosh. We have a ripe tomato. The tomatoes look horrific. <laughs> but whatever oh my heavens look at these beauties oh boy this is why you don't leave sunflowers in a tomato bed these two wasted no time foraging Up until they don't mind that they didn't. Feast your eyes on these hollyhocks. Oh, the Brussels sprouts grew so big. Like, look at that's how tall they are. They're they're up to Brian's waist, and it looks like they're starting oh, to get little big, little tiny little Brussels sprouts. Oh, here, here, they're going. Yeah, there they are. But look at these, look at these kohlrabi. They didn't harvest them. I wonder, are they still edible? I'll give them a go. Where's the broccoli? <gasps> Holy shnikes! Look at all the broccoli. They could be eating broccoli. Oh, they're almost all, all done. Oh, we are so having broccoli tonight. So, so the netting, the plants grew so tall that it just pushed the netting right off. Wasn't even doing anything. We have been gone for five weeks. Before we left, I planted the garden out super hastily and we came home to the Garden of Eden or you could sing, welcome to the jungle. It was an absolute jungle, but in such a good way. So some of the stuff is overdue. Some of the stuff is not even ready, um, but we brought home coho salmon from Lake Superior. And so I am so excited. Like. I can't even describe how excited I am to cook a supper. So we are going to have fried kale and onions with my first broccoli. And in my shirt is, hang on. That might not be a nice shot, but we got a whole bunch of new potatoes. So we're going to uh, boil potatoes, stir fry some onions and kale and have broccoli with the salmon, and it's gonna be awesome. I'm looking so forward to it. So happy to be home and dirty from the garden. Peace and out, To Billy. see these chickens. Peace out, Billy. <laughs> Hi, Huey. everyone today is the first morning back from our little adventure I've moved the chickens done some laundry Brian's out on a mission with a friend I have to finish unpacking myrtle I have to run and go get uh, some chicken food 
but I gotta do a garden tour for July because I only got a couple days left and you should see this beast. It is unbelievable how much a garden will grow in five weeks. So we have had actually a surprising amount of rain. I was really afraid there was gonna be a drought this year and there, there was where we were. Um, we didn't see rain since we left Ontario, literally. So we didn't see rain through any of the provinces in, out on the coast. We only got rain actually when we got back to Ontario. So after five weeks, which was crazy, but I know here um, they got steady rain. So the garden is gigantic, out of control, full of weeds, which is fine. We can manage all that. Uh, but there is some produce I have to deal with. Um, specifically uh, the kohlrabi, which are literally the size of small melons, <laughs> um, larger than softball. I don't even know if they're good to eat, but what my plan is, um, I'm gonna try and roast some tonight. Um, and I'm also going to try pickling it, uh, which is mostly, which is like more like a slaw, a fridge pickle. And I'm gonna modify the recipe for myself. But just quickly this morning, I wanted to give you a garden tour because really, um, although it is a bit of a jungle, it's gorgeous. I was so happy to come home to this garden. Anyways, here we go. I just gotta dump the compost. Let's just start with a... Uh... I missed you too. Let's just start with a kind of overall shot <laughs> of the beast. Um, and we'll just have a quick peek here at the herb garden, which if you remember, I let all the cilantro just go as well as the borage, the volunteer borage, which the bees are just loving. So mostly in here, we have now coriander seed, all going to seed, um, but we do have some amazing dill. So although my recipe, the uh, pickled kohlrabi recipe, the fridge pickle kohlrabi recipe doesn't call for dill, I'm gonna use these dill spears because it's the best dill I've ever grown. And I'm kind of sad. I didn't grow cucumbers this year. Um, so I'm gonna have to use that dill for something else because look at how beautiful it is. Look at the size of these, look at the size of this. It's as big as a dinner plate, that one floret. Like, how amazing is that? That's, this is the biggest dill I've ever grown. It's incredible, look at that, it's beautiful. <laughs> Holy, okay, check this out, look at these guys. There's my, there's the two chicks. They're so beautiful. I think they might be hens, at least the gray one, which is exciting, because um, maybe they'll lay blue eggs. This is beautiful. Strawberries look like they've stopped producing, but our sage uh, is doing really well. I let a ton of, like, look at this, look at this. <laughs> it's just like all overgrown. I gotta get, I gotta do something with those strawberries. So last night, Brian and I came in and pulled all the things that were finished. All of the lettuce in this bed had gone to seed, so I pulled it, but the rhubarb is jamming. Got some volunteer dill in here. These sunflowers are um, a little out of control. So I'm gonna try and stake them, but I, I actually left these volunteer sunflowers and as always, they're gorgeous, but they do compete a lot with the other stuff in here. So onions are doing really well. We had some last night for dinner, so that was a real treat. We've got a whole bunch of um, kale that I'm going to harvest and freeze and some that we ate. Another um, calendula and then way at the back a ton of lettuce that I have to pull. My beans. So Trail of Tears are off to a slow start but the purple potted are starting to climb over the trellis so they're starting to look good. Okay so like really? Look at that sucker. I know they're supposed to be eaten at the size of a tennis ball, not like a softball. But, oh, here's one. Here's one that's normal size. Like, this is how big they should be when you eat them. So we'll have that one for dinner tonight. But the rest, like, look at this guy. It's split. I'm just going to, like, look at that weird weirdness. I wish I had rabbits right now. I miss my rabbits, too. So I have to... I'm thinking about um, 
getting more rabbits and where I'm going to get them from. That's actually, that one's not too bad a size. The reason why I'm harvesting these today, this morning, is because we're supposed to get rain. So this is a good rainy day project. Also, unpacking the bus, but... Okay, this one, this one takes the cake. Look at the size of that beast. The Brussels sprouts are jamming. Who knows if they're even going to produce anything. This is my first year growing them. I can see all the little like nubbies, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna get Brussels sprouts. I've heard from a lot of people that they take a really long time. And I'm not sure if I packed them in here too tight. They look pretty squeezed in. And I had a cover over these and they actually just like pushed the cover straight up. So they just like pushed the cover right off the ground. So some cabbage loopers got in because I see some frass. Um, I'll show you. See, I see the frass on the leaves right here. So probably, oh yeah, look at them all. See all these little caterpillars? So this is the best part of organic gardening because there are a lot of downsides but when you get these juicy little tender little wormies so that so the loopers just flew up under the the cover and laid their eggs so but when you get these little suckers and I'm going to pick a bunch off you just go and feed them to the chickens watch the broccoli that I started from seed is doing really well. Last night we had broccoli. Um, I will definitely grow broccoli again. I absolutely love broccoli and they've gone a little bit too far just because we weren't here, but they were absolutely delicious. So I, I can see us eating broccoli all week long. Here is some borage. I just laugh so much because when it looks small, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna leave that plant. And now it's like filled up this whole end of these two beds. Okay, we've got a couple of tomatoes coming on. So the tomatoes did not get pinched and staked. They're starting to get some um, blight. So Brian asked me not to touch these, so I'm not gonna. This is Brian's job, reclaiming the tomatoes. Look at those, oh boy. Um, so what else do we have going on here? We've got some basil, so I always make pesto, so we've got lots of basil. Uh, those I started from seeds, so they're doing really well. Our marigolds, some of our other marigolds got kind of choked out, uh, but look, even if they're not staked properly, look at, there's some midnight snack, one of my favorite tomato varieties to grow, more borage. Here is a mistake that I made because I um, I have too much of a heart. So these were all volunteer sunflowers and they are absolutely gorgeous. However, they're completely taking over this, this bed of tomatoes. Um, so I'm gonna have to do something uh, about that here shortly. Probably just gonna trim up the lower limbs just to let some light in. Here is a bed of extra kale that I had left over. One one uh, Brussels sprout that somehow made it into the mix here. Um, my cabbages are doing well. I'm going to go through and take off all of the lower leaves just to let some air in there. Um, but the early cabbage heads, you can see some, um, this is earwig damage on here. You could see some earwig damage, but these cabbages, one, two, three, four, five, these are all ready. So I'm probably going to make some slaw um, with them and maybe, um, I'll actually fry some up and then also I'll ferment some so I'll make some sauerkraut because y'all know that's my favorite. Like I can't even turn around in here. Um, okay, so this is my pepper bed and like I, for some reason peppers and I just don't really get along. They're not doing too too well. I do have some peppers but they're tiny. Um, not much to write home about actually. Uh, these are the ones I bought. I do have some bell peppers, so I'm not going to complain. And I've got some jalapenos coming on. But had I been here, I probably could have pinched the plants to have them bush out a little bit more. But like in here, there actually are tomatoes. Like here's, this is a uh, Paul Robeson, I think. But oh, those sunflowers, like look at that giant. And look at these. Like, that's what happens when you leave volunteers and go away for five weeks. <laughs> Uh, got a couple zinnias coming here. One, that's, 
that's nice it'll be some nice color uh came through last night this all this whole entire bed was um lettuce we pulled them all and i still have some more to pull but there's some kale on the end of that bed that we will enjoy um here's the row of sunflowers i planted and didn't thin yikes um our beans they are doing really well in this bed aside from the volunteer sunflowers that I left. <laughs> uh, and then there's three jalapeno pepper plants on the end that aren't doing too well just because I would imagine they've been too shaded out by the sunflowers. Um, volunteer bean plant in the aisle, probably end up pulling that. And then just before I left, I seeded some beans in here and I seeded all of the leftover zinnia seeds that are coming up so that's going to be a nice pop of color but there's also some weeds in here that I have to take care of more volunteer uh, lettuce that I have to remove borage that the bees are loving volunteer sunflowers that are out of the way that can stay also my compost is overgrown with volunteers it's a hot mess in here um, purple potted taking over this trellis so that's really pretty uh, this bed of beans so I need I had to reseed these before I left I can't remember what varieties these are but they're doing really well as you can see so that is really nice um this bed didn't get anything put in it and you can see the weeds are starting to take over so I'm gonna have to come in and get all that vetch out of there and I might sow something for the fall in here not sure what um but probably won't leave it empty here is a volunteer tomato plant that I left before we left and I can see it's some kind of um, some kind of cherry tomato the garlic is ready to harvest so that's exciting I'm going to do that along with all of the volunteer lettuce again um, that that you see here yeah but we got lots of volunteer sunflowers some volunteer potatoes we dug some of those yesterday actually for dinner um but the the star of the show for sure are these hollyhocks so these are all the ones i planted last year so you can see some really dark crimson or burgundy um we i i finally got a frilly so um there's this beautiful kind of fuchsia pink this burgundy look at that here is the star of the show right here the frilly unfortunately with all of the rain we've had um they laid over so brian and i tied them up yesterday but oh look at these i'm really trying not to get overwhelmed by the amount of work we knew it was going to be a lot of work when we got home um so i'm just taking i'm just kind of thinking about what i have to do like what shouldn't wait what the weather is going to be like rain today so i'll work inside and and pickle um that kohlrabi uh and just take it in stride we cut all the grass last night kind of first cut i have a little bit more to do um but yeah we're just gonna take it easy and day by day make a list of stuff to do um but overall i'm really happy with with this and kind of how everything looks like the garden is a beast right now but it's it's a beast in a good way it's a hot mess but a hot mess in a good way and i'm just so glad to be to be home it is just so great to be able to stand in here and see all of the beauty and how big everything's gotten i'm grateful that we got so much rain while we were gone um it made it easier for the house sitters for sure i bet not to have to uh water too too much but I'm super grateful to be home and to be back in the garden. And I'm looking forward to the work um, in getting everything back in shape in here. I really hope that you are all having a great growing season so far and that you've got something in the ground or in the pot that you can watch and enjoy for the uh, summer season. This coming week is supposed to be cool. So I'm hoping to get a lot of work done around here, including some firewood processing and stuff like that. But anyways... Hope you're all having a great summer so far. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.